a completely different expression of Morgan here. Going into Danielle Boulan's lineup of wines, this is a person who has so much access to old vines and in this really neat old school package here, you see this line, Vigne Planté en 1926. This is a 2014 bottling, so 88 year old vines when they were harvested to make this wine. The Delise bottling of Morgan from Danielle Bouland for me is a wine of profundity. There's a depth to this wine and a length that exceeds my expectations every time I open a bottle of this because I never expect there to be so much spectrum on a wine made from Gamay. Yeah, this is Beethoven in a glass. There's electricity in mm. here. It's a full um, orchestra. I think this is the first wine where it's a, it's not a chamber piece, mm -hmm. uh, it's not rock and roll, it's a full orchestra. Yeah. My dad and I went to Lyon in 2005, and then we went down to the Rhone Valley, and we tasted some Northern Rhone, and it was interesting to me how much of a, um, a kinship there was with a lot of the wines from the Northern Rhone compared to a lot of the wines from the Cru Beaujolais. Vineyards that are just a, a little easy walk between one another can be so different in terms of expression from the Burgundian styled light, uh, high toned La Pierre to the Beethoven just intense and profound depth of uh, the Boulogne. To me, the only way that I can describe it is that Great Cru Beaujolais can be put into the two different camps, Burgundy-like and Cote Roti-like. I hadn't thought of it before, but I see that very much in, in both those wines. Yeah. So I did not think of Burgundy when I tasted this wine. <laughs> yeah. I did think of it when I tasted this wine. Yeah. And now that you mentioned Northern Rhone, I, I see it very much. And I wonder if your <coughs> affection for Cru Beaujolais comes from the fact that you discovered it at a moment with your father. Oh man, that had a lot to do with it. The social terroir of all of this <laughs> is so interesting yeah. because it colors everything we feel about the wine. It certainly colors the way they make the wine. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what's so special about Beaujolais is it has such a social terroir mm. that's disparate as yeah. opposed to Burgundy, which is becoming less and less diverse because as they grow more and more successful and more and more wealthy, mm. they're all adopting the best. There's no need for that in the Beaujolais. Well, there's no need for it and there's no opportunity for yeah. it. And so the social terroir maintains this diversity, which mm. I think gives us this enormous rainbow of flavors that we had here this morning. Yeah. It's quite remarkable.